Hey everybody, in this tutorial we're going to talk about the difference between photoreal and interactive mode for your iRay renders in iClone. You can see very little difference in the two images here, and that's because interactive rendering mode is generally used to get faster, fine progressing results. We'll talk a little bit about the settings you can adjust to achieve that here. You can find the photoreal and interactive render mode presets in the settings tab of your iRay render plugin window. Let's try selecting the fast preset from the drop down menu at the top. You'll see once we do that, the interactive preset will automatically become active. In this side-by-side -side comparison, you'll notice the character's skin in the photoreal image is more grainy despite the same render time. When the images are fully rendered, you won't be able to tell much of a difference between the two. You can perhaps notice a bit of a higher contrast in certain areas of the interactive render due to the lack of global illumination light bounces, but other than that, to the untrained eye, they look fairly similar. Therefore, interactive mode is very useful when trying to establish the lighting and camera angle of your shot without the need for lengthy refresh times each time you adjust a scene element. The main advantage of photoreal mode is that it incorporates the GI or global illumination effect. This will be especially noticeable in scenes that contain light refraction through semi-transparent objects. In this scene here, you can see that we have these semi-transparent chest pieces and marbles that are scattering light that has been cast through them. GI bounces will calculate the path reflection, and refraction of light up to the number of bounces you set. The light on this scene at the top of the arc is an emissive light, meaning that we've set the self-illumination of the object to full, as you can see here, which casts the light the same color as the diffuse color set in the material settings. Let's change this to a cyan or aqua blue type of color and see the results update in our iRay window. You can see the light refracting through the object changes its hue slightly. You can probably see a more pronounced effect if we adjust the diffuse color to a bright purple. Now you'll notice purple wavelengths refracting through the glass objects, particularly the marble in the front and the clear and fallen knight chess pieces. Notice that the opaque objects, like the ball on the left, don't seem to be that strongly affected. If we change our preset to fast, it's going to default to interactive mode, and you'll see a significant difference in the lighting of the scene as we lose the emissive lighting effect and the global illumination bounce. Now you'll see the absence of purple light refracting through the marble and clear chess piece and no light bouncing off the background either. We're also missing the metallic effect as can be seen on the steel marble. Let's set GI mode to diffuse and see the difference. When it's set to diffuse, only the diffuse GI reflection is simulated. The background board will become visible, however you'll still see an absence of metallic reflection on the marble. If we set the GI mode to diffuse plus specular, then you'll see the metallic effect begin to show. However, the emission effect is still missing. The more options you tack on to your GI mode, the longer your renders are going to take to calculate. Here's a comparison between all of the images just to show you how adding diffuse and specular options in the GI mode will affect the final render. The ray trace quality setting is generally used for the semi-transparent effect on objects. To demonstrate this, let's zoom in on our semi-transparent marble here. You'll notice if we set the ray trace quality to high that there will be a lot more refractive detail within the marble and the dark orange chess piece behind it. Keep in mind that in a complex scene with a lot of semi-transparent objects, using a high quality setting for ray tracing can significantly increase render time. Here you can see the difference between a low and high setting side by side. That's all I wanted to show you in this tutorial, just a quick little couple of tips for how you can use settings to speed up your initial render times before you finally establish the perfect light and camera angle settings that you want to use for your final render. As always, make sure you check out our forums at forum.reillusion.com, and I hope to see you in the next video.